Hello everyone, it's Chelsea with Paper Actio Studio with the dark and bright technique today. Um, this is something that I came up with last April just by accident and then a version of it as well that I call Halo. Um, the first time I ever did it I used this stencil so I'm going to show you what to do with it. You lay down some dark paint, then you put a stencil over it and it needs to be a stencil that has some open spaces and then remove as much of the paint through the stencil as you can. I like to use deli paper for this because I can really get my knuckles in there and push it down in through the, the um, bits on the stencil and remove paint. Then the next step is to apply some bright colors using a smaller brayer or you could use a sponge. Um, I just happen to have a two inch brayer that I really love so I use that to apply the paint. And I generally use my 6x6 plate as kind of like a, a palette to pick up my paints with when I use my smaller brayer. And then it also makes some really great crusty bits um, when, you, when I clean it up with a layer of paint. So the stencil's still on there. You haven't removed the stencil yet and you're putting on some bright colors. Um, that's why I call it dark and bright because I like the dark lines with the brighter colors. And Make sure that you, uh, even though it's a small brayer, that you ink it all the way around so that you have a lot of it and then you can just kind of like place it around on the stencil and get that paint through the little holes pressing lightly. So then you remove the stencil. Um, before the next step you want to make sure that this layer is dry, fairly dry, not gloopy and um, at the end you'll see one where I left it too wet so that you can see what happens when you do that. Um, this is a good time to try to clean off your stencils, any excess paint off your stencils. I usually sandwich in between two pieces of deli paper and rub. Sometimes paint comes off and I have a, an additional ghost print, sometimes it does not. So then the next step is to apply a neutral color over your dried layer. And I use white, I use unbleached titanium, I use Naples yellow, sometimes you use a metallic. Um, but something that's neutral because you don't want to really change those bright colors that you've taken all that time to put on there. Then just apply your paper. This time I'm just using regular printer paper to pick up my prints. Make sure that it's well burnished down, you know, that you've pressed it down well and given it enough time to adhere. And then that should pull the entire thing off your plate and you have dark lines with bright colors in between. So that one wasn't the best one ever, but it wasn't bad. I mean, you, you get what you get with gel printing. You don't pitch a fit. So now this is the additional technique that I call halo technique. And again, this was a complete accident that um, I discovered this and you put down, it's the same steps. You put down your dark colored paint Put a stencil over it. Remove as much paint as you can through the stencil. <clears throat> Again, I like to use deli paper for this because it's because I can see how much paint I'm getting off. I can push it down really hard. Sometimes I get my knuckles and I push them really hard on there. It just depends on if the paint wants to come off or not. And then this is where the additional step is, is to apply an entire layer of color over the stencil before you've removed it. You're just going to put a whole layer on there and the reason that I found this out was because I had let my stencil dry too much and so I put a layer of paint over it to pull it off and when I did it made this really cool effect and that's how I came up with it. So this time I'm using copper. Copper is my favorite metallic and um, I put that over the whole stencil and then again removed the layer but I'm not worried as much about push, pushing really hard on this one. I don't care if some of the paint remains because that's the halo. So not too worried about that. Then of course go over it with your bright colors again. Um, I don't remember what colors I used. I think I used a purple on this one. Yep, there's the purple. <laughs> Uh, most of the paints I'm using today are the Arteza inexpensive acrylic paints. Um, I have a set of, I believe it's 24 colors, and it's it's easy to use these. They're um, fairly moist, and I can have all of them out on the desk around me without having to go and pick up uh, paints off 
you know, off the floor or something or out of my caddy. Um, the only exception to that is the titanium white, the unbleached titanium, the Naples yellow, and the metallics. Those I'm all using like a bigger, a bigger tube of those that's sitting in a caddy. caddy. <coughs> Excuse me, a caddy next to me. <coughs> Froggy's in my throat. Okay, so moving on, remove the stencil, then apply a neutral color over the top. This time I'm using unbleached titanium, titan buff, whichever one. This one happens to be named unbleached titanium. Sometimes it's called titan buff. And as I'm going, I'm also removing um, the paint, clean, doing clean up prints of the paint on my 6x6. And make sure that when you're applying your last layer that it's thin that you can see the design through it. If you've got too much, just roll that paint off on your roll off paper. You want to be able to see through it. If you can't see through it, the whole thing is not going to come off and you'll get a very patchy print, which I've done plenty of times, which is why I know that. <laughs> because I don't like patchy prints. I want, I want everything to come up at once. Um, another thing that I do is I'm using a 12 by 12 so that I can get the entire um, page covered because eight and a half by 11 which is what I originally purchased um, it wouldn't it would have like a border around the edge so that's when I finally got this 12 by 12 and I can make a whole eight and a half by 11 so that's the copper halo you can see um, like around each shape is a little halo so that's why I call it halo and now I'm speeding up here I've showed you the two techniques, which are really just one technique and a, a different version of it, an additional step or whatever. So I'm just making some more um, prints for you to, to see again how to do it. Um, that's, you know, a darker purple paint. Remove the paint through the stencil. Then I've got this fluorescent pink. And my intention was to have, this is my new fluorescent pink, by the way. I just bought it. It's from PBO. <laughs> and... Um, during our live show, Peg had this paint, and I'm like, I want that paint. Now, what I should have done was go ahead and remove a bit more of that paint, because you can see some of that fluorescent pink still on there. And this stencil had really open um, spaces. This is a Stencil Girl stencil. Almost all of these are Stencil Girl, except for the very first one. So I decided to add some stamping onto the plate through those holes just to be more interesting. And then I put my layer of titanium white over it with the intention of having purple, pink halo, and kind of white. But there was still too much pink paint on there. So that's why I left this one in so that you could see um, what can happen if you don't remove all the paint. There's still a halo though, but it's not as intense as I intended. I intended those openings to be white with a purple, I mean the purple and then the pink and then white, and this, you can see how much of that paint was left. It didn't look like it was on the plate, it looked like it was cleaned up, but it apparently was not. Okay, so now here's here's something else that um, might be interesting to you. Can you do this with a, with a light color paint? Yes, but it'll see you'll see at the end there's not really much of a point to doing it, but I'm going to show you it anyway. This is a titanium white layer instead of a dark layer. I put the stencil on and remove as much paint as I can and this paint there was a lot of it so I did a second uh, removal of the paint and it turned out really cool over that um, that particular print that was just removing paint on a you know the, a different one and I just really liked that how that two layer print came out. So then I'm putting the bright color over the top <clears throat> just like I did with the darks um, another question you might have is, can you do it on dark paper? And you basically will have the same result as this. It's like there's not really much point to it. <laughs> Did you, but you can. You absolutely can. So I removed the stencil, and now I'm applying a neutral paint over the top, which is white. It wasn't completely dry. You can see there's a few spots, but it was fine. So then I pick up the print, and the reason that I say it's pointless is that it really doesn't look very much different than if you had just put the stencil down and put some paint on it and 
put it on a piece of white paper. See? It does give you very nice crisp lines, and if that's what you're looking for, then that certainly is an option, but I don't know. It just seems like that's a lot of steps for getting something that doesn't look that impressive, if you know what I mean. So here's my Naples yellow paint. I really like this paint. <laughs> I'm doing a cleanup print. A lot of that did not come off, and this cleanup print around the edges is really cool. Um, you get some really interesting patterning on the edges because the white paint was on there but I'm picking it up with yellow on a craft piece of paper too so see that's really interesting those will be interesting for collage those little pieces so here's some more black I can't remember what my point of this one was Oh, I just wanted to use this stencil. This is that uh, dangling pod stencil. I haven't used it very much. I just wanted to see how it would be with this particular stencil. Dark paint, removed it. Now I'm putting a white halo on it. I was That's what I was trying to do, get uh, black and white um, with color, but it didn't really come out as well as I had wanted. I removed too much of the white paint. See, I'm going back in and removing a second time. And I should have just removed it once and called it good. So, there you go. It's one of those times when I didn't do it right. <laughs> I also put way too much paint out for my bright colors. Um, it's because I squeezed them out of those. I, I guess I didn't do Arteza paint. I was uh, thinking about using the fluorescent pink again. So... I used some of my 4 ounce Liquitex Basics paints for this one. And they came out, way too much of it came out. That's why those little tubes of Arteza are nice for this. And inexpensive. And you can have them all on your desk at once. <laughs> so there's uh, the stencil removed with the black underneath. And I decided to pick it up with gold, which is an option for a neutral. Um, that's a PBO metallic paint. And I thought it would be kind of cool to have the gold in the background. Doesn't really show that much, though. But. Anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying this video and you've figured out the technique. See, some of the, some of the paint didn't come off, so I have, like, real patchy. It's too patchy, but I cleaned it up and I got some kind of interesting crusty bits. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying this video and you've learned the technique that I've been using. I made those tiles the other day with that. Um, I did some of it on Art Joy of Sharing when we were gel printing and then that tile was used on the princess, fiber princess, um, mixed media canvas that uh, that came out this week so this is all kind of like connected I'm just it's all kind of connected so that was some interesting crusty bits so then this last one I decided to use a heavier body paint which is the Dina Wakely paints just to see um, I think I was getting bored at this point <laughs> what I didn't tell you guys is that I did this entire video without the camera on <laughs> like an hour, hour 20 minutes at least of gel printing without the camera on and then realized, oh, I'm not recording this at all. <laughs> so I had to do the whole thing over. But anyway, that's what happens. I'll show you the prints from that session at the end as well. Um, so the Dina Wakely paints are drier because they're a heavy body um, very pigmented paint and I guess I've tried them on the plate before and remembered that I didn't really care for that the way they work and I just tried it again and um, the paint underneath the night colored paint was too dry and so too much of it came up off with the stencil and like there's hardly anything left see disappointing <laughs> And then the top paint, because I was disappointed, I rushed it. And the top paint 
was too wet. And so when I went to put my neutral on, look what happened. Turned into pink. So what I get is some colors on some pink, basically. So that's why you need to wait. And in your area, it might take longer than it takes me because I live in a dry area. Although right now, it's humid. So, um, I don't know. It may not be any different. But you do need to make sure that that, that layer, while you're, when you remove the stencil, that that layer is dry before you put the neutral color on. Because you get something kind of muddy like this, which is not hideous. But it's not the same as the technique. So here's show and tell time, and I'm just going to play music until the end. You can see all the different prints that I made. That's it for me. Oh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share. Bye-bye. <laughs>